say, what you doing now? What you gonna do after it's all done? Gonna go back in the crowd. How about that? We have to be able to pour water from the fish out of the crowd. Okay. Nice fish. Really nice fish. Okay.
Well, I got a fish on and no net. Another big fish. I have no idea what I'm going to do when I get him to me. I haven't even seen him yet. Nope, I know he's not done yet. Pike me now? No? Yes. Next riffle, and then I broke off. Yeah, you have to really do that a lot here. <laughs> I always tell people if you're not breaking off, <laughs> you're you not ain't fishing where you belong. <laughs>
Oh, I have one on. Damn. I wanted to feel what a fish felt like on here. Well, that rod would get a fish, put the power to it. Okay. I broke off, so. I broke off. Oh, you got one fly on there now? I, I had to re-rig. Oh, okay. I put 4X on the dropper. So, yeah. That works. <laughs> this, this water, it's not like this water's clear. No. Whoa, got one. Does that count? Hell yeah. <laughs> what it's the? Powder a chub. Uh, chub. I've never caught one of those before. I assume it's a chub or it's a baby pike minnow, actually. It's a baby pike. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Would be some good bait, wouldn't it? Wanna leave it on there? No. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, it's a fish. It's I'm counting it. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Three inches. <laughs> that was something. I think it's the bottom, but something. Yeah, I can see it move. Yes, it was.
assassin lock when your pockets are empty as mine. The luck is so hot, I've been gambling, lots in the blues in my mind. I don't want no. back to the studio and it's been a crazy month. It's been all my stinking client work that's getting in the way of what I really want to be doing and that's making fishing videos. I'm making a plan to accept less client work and prioritize what really matters and that's making content that earns me zero money and makes me 100% happy. Since it's so noseable, let me address what's happening right here. So yesterday I was on the sack filming the salmon opener and I tried to literally catch the drone with my face. I was wearing glasses so there was no risk to my eyes but it was still a super close call. It doesn't hurt at all and it should heal up in no time but uh, a pro tip for landing a drone on a moving vessel is to park the drone in front of you and just sort of let the boat or whatever you're on move underneath it then you can grab it and put it away. All right so this was a super fun trip. I got an invite to float the upper pit river from a fellow youtuber and custom net maker Cascade Fly Fisher. This isn't an, ex an especially long section river but it's nearly impossible to access the good runs from the bank so a drift boat gets you out there. Just for reference, that first half of the video was fished entirely from an island. So I've got a link to Cascade's channel down in the description. He lives up in the mountains, so he gets to post videos from the Hat Creek area and surrounding rivers all the time. So check him out. I did a little bit of tight lining, but actually never got a fish back to the net. And that's mainly for a lack of trying. The fish were in riffles and along the edges of fast water at the tops of pools. So I threw an indicator rig most of the day. So an indicator let me cover more of the water with each cast. And I was able to reach some of the fish I couldn't cast to with the Euro rig. So... I've been spending a lot of time fishing under an indicator lately and my confidence with that technique has grown quite a bit. Right off the bat, my first eat was this chunky 18 inch rainbow. I was not expecting that. And lately I've been getting into the habit of unclipping my net so I can easily hold it between my knees while I get the underwater release shot. And in this time, uh, the net slowly drifted away. And when I realized it, I let the fish go when she started to roll on her side, but quickly righted herself and swam away clean. So I got an ugly release and I lost my net. So 
what are you going to do? We're well into summer now, so I definitely want to remind you guys to carry a thermometer and keep an eye on the water temps. When the water hits about 67 degrees, you'll be putting a lot of stress on the trout, which dramatically increases their mortality rate. Basically, you'll kill them. This section of the pit gets really warm in the summer, and we fished it nearly two months ago at the beginning of June, and the temps were about 65 degrees midday, so we caught it just in time. It's basically unfishable now until the temps cool off in the fall. Two flies stood out for me today, the classic Pat's rubber legs and coffee and brown, and the Olson's blowtorch did most of the heavy lifting. Today I want to do something new. I'm going to read your YouTube comments and answer some questions. In the last video, DJ said, I came nose to nose with a beaver in that creek. I got about three feet from me, turned tail, and slapped the water. I got soaked from it. LOL. Well, in case you're wondering, he's talking about Yellow Creek, and uh, that's pretty funny. I'm not surprised. There are several man-made uh, like dams that I think beavers have sort of upgraded and turned into actual beaver dams. So uh, I guess that's certainly a concern if they've got uh, pups or whatever you call baby beavers uh, hiding out in their in their hideaway holes. But definitely uh, could not. I but I can definitely see that happening. Cascade Flyfisher said, "Hit it again late fall down by the mouth." I've talked to some folks who catch nice browns and it does and it does hold some big fish. Uh, that's pretty good to know. I assume he's talking about Hamilton Branch, but it could also be Yellow Creek because that feeds into the uh, the uh, Feather River uh, a bit further down from where I fished. It probably, I wouldn't be surprised if there were browns down there, but uh, that's probably really good advice. Uh, thanks, man. It's one thing I'd also like to point out. It's like one thing that's really cool about the comments or just this whole community in general is it's there's a whole lot of sharing. I don't really feel like uh, people are super religious about sharing things. Uh, about what flies are working or what time of year is good to go to a certain river. Um, I think we're all in this to have fun and get better at it. There's so much to learn. Um, so I really appreciate you guys who love to teach just as much as I do. A person named Crystal Fa, not my wife Crystal, someone else, asks, Hello, did you receive my message? No. Do I know you? For a long time I've wanted to read these comments and answer any questions that I thought were really good on the next video. So I'm going to continue reading your comments. So. If you have a good question or you just want to say something funny, hey, I might read it in the next video. Question of the day. My pair of basic Orvis waders are unrepairable at this point and I need to get a new pair when the temps start to come down this fall. What's the best bang for the buck? Let me know down in the comments. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about my fishing equipment or my video gear, I have links to everything down in the description. If you'd like to follow along with me in real time, look me up on Instagram. I post up pictures, video clips, fun stuff on my story so you don't have to wait for me to get these videos edited. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I post a new video every week, and in the next one, Crystal and I go backpacking in the Caribou Wilderness. Until then, everyone, Godspeed.